hello and welcome to what I guess will be the f um, my Let's Play of Streets of Rage. Uh, I might do a Let's Play of Streets of Rage 2, maybe 3, uh, but I'm doing this for the Cartridge Clubs, um, by the Cartridge Brothers. Their podcast for this month will be, uh, the Cartridge Club, Club podcast for this month will be on Streets of Rage 2, and I'm just playing through the first one because I like the first one better. It's one of my favorite games ever, and I'm just going to, I'm just getting all this out of the way because I want to be completely silent for the opening because the music in it is amazing. All right, go. Really, how fantastic is that? That that is, uh, th that is just using the Sega Genesis sound processor uh, to its its full capability. There, it's just fantastic. I love it. All right, now I'm going to be playing this on easy mode because, well, the game single player is quite difficult, and on easy mode it's still challenging, especially on the last few levels. But I kind of want to be able to get at least to the last level, level 8. I'm going to quit at a certain point in that level because it's just bullshit at that point. But um, I've never beaten this game single player, so. And I'm going to be pl uh, playing as Axel because he's a ripoff of Cody from Final Fight. No one ever claimed this game was original. But uh, I, I do think it's a lot better than the original Final Fight, at least. Alright. Oh. Alright. Uh, that's just me. I, I forgot what uh, buttons I had the controls set to. All right. See, so, yeah, I'm playing this on Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, and uh, if you're uh, the Xbox 360 version, of it. and if you um, have a PS3 or a 360, and you have any interest in retro games, pick up Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. It's like 20 bucks. And you just get so many awesome games out of it. Even if you have a bunch of these games. Oh, I love tossing them into each other. That's so fat. That's just fabulous. Um, even if you have a lot of these games, it's just great to have them all in one place. And there's also the fact that... Um... Oh, I thought I grabbed him. All right. It's just also that you just get so many of them in one place, and it's usually, it's just so much cheaper than getting them all, for actual copies of them at least. And I do think the Xbox 360 controller is really great for playing games like this. I just love the 360's controller. Alright. I don't really like using weapons that often in this game. It's, uh... You can't really attack as quickly with them, so... I only really use them when, um... I'm outnumbered. Also, you can't really drop them. By the way, the music in this game is so good. I mean, it's just using the Genesis sound processor to its full potential. Um, and when it was used to its full potential, it just sounded amazing. I mean, people say it's not as good as the Super Nintendo one, and it's not as powerful, but... 
you could do a lot with it. It's evidenced by this. It just sounds so video gamey. <laughs> um, also, I think Earthworm Jim sounded better on the Genesis than the Super Nintendo. And Fatal Fury 2. Fatal Fury 2 just sounds amazing on the Super Nintendo. Oh, hey, a Dominatrix with a whip. That's offensive. This game's encouraging gamers to go out and beat up sex workers by grabbing them like they're humping them and then German suplexing them neck first onto the pavement. I mean, it's encouraging violence against sex workers. I mean, they're pro wrestling moves used against sex workers. That's horribly offensive. She's just trying to make ends meet uh, by going out and whipping guys with, with a whip. And then you headbutt her. That's horribly offensive. This has been an offended Kotaku writer. And now you're fighting a pirate with a boomerang. That's horribly offensive. You're beating up Australians now? Wait, are, are Australians a, a, a marginalized group? No? Okay, never mind then. I don't care. <laughs> but pirates are. I mean... The, the, the slang term for gay men is butt pirate. This game's encouraging homophobia. <laughs> this has been a randomly offended Kotaku writer. And it's actually kind of surprising how much that sort of hurts my voice to do, uh, even though I'm just kind of talking out of my nose. Okay, second level. Yeah, German suplexing people neck first onto the pavement is satisfying as hell. Take that, Blanca. Yeah, I always called those guys Blanca when I was a kid. Those guys in the denim are called Garcia. This game's encouraging violence against Mexicans. Uh, Mexican gingers. Yeah, what would Louis C.K. think? <laughs> this has been a randomly offended rock, paper, shotgun writer. Yeah, just, just please tell me if that's not funny. Because <laughs> I was just doing that all day the other day. Uh, just finding things in video games to be offended by. <laughs> just taking logical leaps like that. Um... <laughs> and talking in that voice about how offended I am. Um, <laughs> which is the nature of game journalism today. Uh, I'm offended, therefore this should be stopped. Uh, who cares if the game's any good? It's racist. Um, despite the fact that it's not. It, it's racist, so says the um, upper middle class white dude. <laughs> you know, who, I mean, there are authorities on that, so. But anyway, yeah, I was I was making that voice for the space of, you know, over the course of like a couple of hours, just laughing my ass off, <laughs> um, saying things like that. Um, I don't know if it's funny to anyone else, but I, I just find it amusing. Oh, now we're beating up carnies and jugglers. <laughs> we're beating up heroin addicts. And sex workers. <laughs> uh, that's actually a favorite tactic of mine when you're fighting uh, guys who take a lot of hits to kill. You just stand there and just punch them, not letting the combo finish. Oh, hey, it's uh, Freddy Wolverine, the second boss. And that's the special move. Now, you don't want to jump against this guy, because uh, I think right before he you do that, he just goes into this... Uh, just this attack that you can't uh, really easily evade. So don't jump attack him. Horrible, horrible idea. You just got to get in close, hopefully grab him. If not, just do a combo. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to finish the combo there, because he... His hit animation is short. Oh, 
I mean, I reflexively almost reach for the uh, the jump button there. Uh, whenever you th throw somebody, I you, I time it so that right as they're getting up, they run directly into your jump attack, which is actually a pretty uh, useful little tactic to use in this game. It's all about little tricks like that uh, that'll help you get through. And I'm probably going to be sharing a few of these. Um, I know on the Cartridge Club forum, P2 said he was having a little bit of trouble with the game, with this one. Um, and, you know, yeah, God forbid you're not awesome at every game ever. <laughs> uh, this is This game is sort of my forte, so... There you go. That hip toss there, which you do by um, holding back an attack when you've grabbed them, is very useful for crowd control. It, it just gets them out of the way of you. It puts them on the ground and gets them far away from you. Um, and if you can time that jump attack there, it's very, very useful. Um, hit them with a punch and get in for a grab because the hit animation that they have should give you enough time to do that. Try to throw enemies into each other. Um, be aware that grabbing a weapon and attacking are the same button and sometimes that'll get your ass kicked. Like you're reaching down to grab a lead pipe and some guy punches you in the head. Because it's the same. That That's actually a problem I have with this game. I don't like that because it's annoying. But, um... And I hate these guys. I hate them so much. Again, throwing enemies into each other. It's a very useful tactic. Yeah, that hip toss is probably the most useful move in the game. Most of the time. See? With the, uh, grabbing weapons thing there. Knives I like, because you can throw them away. I don't know how, um, often you have to toss them. I don't know if there's a way to do that specifically. Or if it's just random. Not really sure, but, uh, yeah. And now the boss. The Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> now here's where I splice in some Ultimate Warrior audio, because why the hell wouldn't I? Come on in! We're nightmares on the best part of my day! Now you must deal with the creation of all the unpleasantries in the entire universe! As I feel the injection from the gods above, I only know that the Ultimate Warrior is totally out of control! Should I jump up the tallest building in the world? Should I lay on the lawn and let him run over me with lawnmowers? Dig your claws into my organs! Stretch into my tendons! Bury your anchors into my bones! For the power of the warrior will always prevail! Ah, you can feel it, too! You can feel it! Warrior. He will be missed, that crazy, screaming, homophobic lunatic who didn't realize how gay professional wrestling was. I love the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> I actually had the sad realization a while back that there's going to be a day fairly soon, probably, that the Iron Sheik's heart just stops beating. <laughs> that guy's amazing. <laughs> I'll put you in the camel crotch and make you humble. <laughs> put you in the camel crotch, fuck you in the ass and make you humble. Now, I actually really like this level, um, because, uh, 
being able to throw enemies off. I'll, I'll show it to you when, when we get to it. Damn. All right. I know I've mentioned this before, but the music in this game is just awesome. I can't get the knife. Oh, well. If only there were a way to go back. Nice. All right. Sometimes it's hard to kind of line them up with that hole there. That's what she said. Um, so, uh... That, that's the back attack. It's really not all that useful. But, uh, okay, hold on. Oh, man. Okay, I uh, didn't time that one right. All right. Ha-ha! <laughs> uh. I just love tossing people off the bridge. It's just so satisfying. the way that water moves. I don't know. That's just it's just nice. I mean, this game really does have nice little graphical and audio touches. It's really impressive for an early Genesis game, especially with the audio. The, the, the music and the graphics are just... I mean, for an early Genesis game, very impressive. Ugh. Okay, I'm tempted to throw in a Clerks reference here about broken bottles. If you've seen Clerks 2, you might know what reference I'm aiming for, but, uh... <laughs> like, I have my limits for saying, damn it, offensive crap in videos, so... I mean, I'll say it as soon as the microphone's off, but... <laughs> Yeah, those guys who come at you with the knives there, they're a pain in the ass. <sighs> the music in this game is fantastic. Yeah, those guys look more like Blanca than the standard ones. The green jackets. Alright, now for one of the more ridiculous boss fights. And keep in mind, this is a game with the Ultimate Warrior. Fat guy in suspenders who breathes fire! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, 16-bit era. <laughs> Back before video games were serious. Now, you don't want to toss that guy, because he falls right on top of you and hurts you. And he's kind of hard to dodge, too. Because the perspective here is a little wonky. See there? Yeah, I just reflexively hit the button at the worst possible moment. Come on. Ah, I wanted, wanted to throw him at him. All right. Yeah, I, I, I hate this boss. Not as much as the boss of the boat level. Those two... Those two can go screw themselves. There we go, extra life. Nice. All right.